counting all the cracked ones and the dream catches in writing all the letters that'll never be returned lighting all the dreamers that forget how to burn tonight we open our front doors Step out onto the prison's dance floor Tonight We pull down all the flags And wrap up our innocence In shiny plastic bags Spread out your curtsy Before my drunken eyes you pull up on your skateboard and say, Can I give you a hand? That day was important. That day I won't ignore. When you opened up your window, but you shut the front door. And I put you in my pocket, and you fall to the street. And you say you like the devil, but we're the nicest guys for me. Tonight, we open our front door. Tonight, we step out onto the prison dance floor. Tonight, we pull out all the flags. And shiny plastic bags I've always wanted to see the pyramids. This is what I told Sarah, my companion. I'd picked her up as a hitchhiker, three years, seven months, 21 days, and nine hours. 
hours before, approximately. Her response was, go buy a postcard of those triangles in the sand and send it to yourself with a message reading, wish you were here. It had been a while since we left that place where we'd already paid. That moment when the jump of your heart is equal to the weight of your body on the ribcage of another. One day, driving late at night, she told me that her mother was born on May 8th, 1945. The day the radios turned drawn cheeks into arched smiles, the news cascading through the crowds and fields as the European guns were dropped and the diplomatic pens clothed in dry blood tried once again to share ink. She went on to say that our kids are going to look back upon those two world wars like the wars of Alexander or Napoleon or even Shakespeare. The victors as rock stars held on the stages of our imagination like armed marionettes wading through the glory of triumph and the poison of nostalgia. We were driving on the outskirts of some small Canadian town, the kind that's cradled by the CBC and tough like an abandoned teenager. At that moment, Sarah turned on the radio, and some music sorted its way through the static and confusion of Alzheimer's speakers, but the melody stopped short with Selena's courage, so she turned it off. Instead, she put in a different album. She explained it was the songs of a man who, when his hands were broken by soldiers, after the September 11th military coup in his country in the 1970s, he mustered a song that sang like spit in their faces glory, and then they riddled his ribcage with 44 bullets and tossed his body into the street, the jump of his heart fading into a cadence of smoke. Now our tires carried us through that pre-alarm clock Canadian town, and all the doors were locked. From the liquor store to the barber shop, the windows blinded to the passing lights. His voice came through the speakers sounding like broken glass, throwing its shards at fear as the oncoming headlights swept across the dashboard like unknown flags blowing in the wind. often about New York and the effect pop songs have on villages in northern India and how that day in Times Square years ago the dumpsters orchestrated a horror movie in my head as the protectors of the peace scared the courage out of us and blanketed us with the possibilities and maybe some violence but they did stop something from happening now my great great aunt was diagnosed with tuberculosis before they had found the cure now her reality had nothing to do with the probability of maybe she was quarantined to the granary on the family farm and her father brought the piano in there for her to play. So when she played her Irish dance hall and classical exercise, the sound resonated up through the wooden walls as the family listened in from the outside until one day the hammer stopped hitting the strings. And I grew up with this story. I remember as a kid imagining her on the floor of that granary. She inspired the idea that scales are the teeth of beauty and that sometimes a song can help you accept the grave or make you feel like you were born on May 8th, 1945. So I asked Sarah once again if she could explain to me what is the story of what the river gave the boat. She said, don't worry, some things float and some things don't. And the ones that don't, well, they're kind of like a glory that doesn't have the grace you'll find in a small town that knows it'll never be abandoned. And then she rolled down the window to let the morning in. And I sat beside her. And the music coming through the speakers became quarantined to my ears, like the sounds of Sarah's hallelujah on my ribcage at her moment of glory. We're looking for that woman. We're looking for your man. We don't believe in me. 
music that needs a hospital. Why looking for your Jesus? Why looking for your love? Why looking for the candy version of the Holy Innocence and shiny black.